Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a booking calendar to work along with your Divi WordPress pages. So here I have the Divi Visual Builder pulled up and if we scroll all the way to the very bottom, I have a section where I'd like to add a booking calendar. So here where it says, let's start a conversation, I'd like to add a calendar to this right hand side where someone can book meetings with me. To get started, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you guys how to set up the Simply Schedule Appointments plugin. This is a free plugin and I'm gonna show you how to set it up from scratch. So I'm gonna head back to my WordPress dashboard, head over to the plugins tab, and then I'm gonna click add new. From here, if you type in simply, it should be enough to bring up this WordPress booking plugin called Simply Schedule Appointments. And you'll notice it in the listing just from the Fox icon. So I'm gonna click install now. And then when it's ready, click activate. Alrighty, so now that I have the Simply Schedule Appointments plugin installed, I can head over to the brand new appointments tab. So here on the left hand side, it actually shows up right above the little Divi tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. And if this is your first time opening up the appointments tab, you'll be greeted by Foxy and the setup wizard. You have the option from here to receive help setting up the plugin uh, using the setup wizard, or you can skip right towards the appointments dashboard. I'm gonna walk through the wizard. So yes, help me please. And first thing it's gonna ask you is a few general settings. So here it's asking me what my time zone is, the date format, time format, week starts on, and then your contact information. And all this is automatically generated for you or detected for you, um, but you're also welcome to adjust it if you need to, or if that looks good, then you can continue to the next step. So let's go ahead and move forward. And next step is we're going to set up our first appointment type. And what an appointment type is, is basically just a booking calendar and all the settings that go along with that. So here we'll set up a few basic settings. We're gonna set up the availability, scheduling options and customer information, and then we'll finally review it. And then we'll go back into Divi and add this in. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and pretty much default a lot of this information, but we can walk through it. So here is our consultation phone call. This is gonna be the name of my booking calendar. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Um, for the duration for this particular booking calendar, I'm gonna actually change it to 45 minutes. I think that should be good. The label is for organizational purposes as an admin. Um, you can change the color for example, teal, and then booking view. You can have your customer either see all your available days in a weekly format or in a monthly format. So let's go with monthly. And then this is the instructions field and you can enter any information that you want your user to know as they fill out the booking form. So for example, you can say something like, we'll meet at your office. So if this all looks good, we can continue. Here in the availability tab, we have a few different options for you to set your schedule. Starting from the top, we have the option, how would you like to define your availability for this appointment type? We have available blocks and we have specific start times. If you're not particularly picky about when your appointments need to start, you can go with the available blocks as long as you select your general availability, the calendar will automatically narrow down on which time slots it needs to show. And the specific start times is if you are picky on when your uh, start times begin and when they end, you can go ahead and use the radio buttons to select your time slots that way. Now going down to the next option, show appointment start times every 10 minutes, 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes. So this is just choosing the start time intervals. The last thing on this tab is that you can actually drag and draw your availability and then you can also drag and erase. So it makes it really easy for you to select your general schedule. And you can also use the plus buttons on the left hand side to open up the hours up to 24 hours. All right. so. Once you're finished setting your availability from here, you can continue on to the scheduling options. So here in the scheduling options, you have a few more rules and settings that you can assign to this particular booking calendar just to narrow down on your schedule and your availability. So to get started at the very top, we have the appointment time zone. You can either set this to localize or you can set it to locked. If you are a virtual business or you're a virtual consultant, for example, and your clients are all over the world or all over the country, we recommend the localized setting. This is going to detect your customer's time zone and then automatically translate those time slots to their time. Um, whereas the lock setting is great 
if you are a local business or you always meet your clients um, nearby. So this will show the time slots in a locked manner. So it's always gonna show in your particular time zone. Next, we have the appointment buffers. This is going to give you some space in between appointments. So if you always need 10 minutes before each appointment, you can set that from here. And then if you need some time after as well. So this is gonna put a little padding in between all your bookings. And then notice required, by default, this is set to one day. And so what this is gonna do is gonna prevent last minute bookings. So you can adjust this to whatever length you're comfortable with. For example, if I don't wanna show any time slots from now until eight hours from now, I can change this to eight hours. And then you also have the option to set a per day limit. That means you can only accept a max number of bookings per day on this specific appointment calendar. So let's set that to two, for example, and then we can continue. Lastly, in the free basic edition, we have the customer information and you can actually select the fields that you'd like to display. Um, if you upgrade to one of the paid editions of this plugin, you can actually add a custom field and it can be a checkbox, a radio button, it can be a phone number, etc. Here we'll select all of these and we'll only require the phone number. So you have the option to display it as well as the option to make it a required field. So let's go ahead and continue. And then lastly, here is our review. So it's going to show you the availability that you set up, a few of the scheduling rules that you also set up here, and then the customer information information list and then the booking info. So here are the short codes that you can use to embed this onto any page. Um, but since we are using Divi, we won't need to use this these because SSA comes with a built-in Divi module that we're gonna use. So if this all looks good, go ahead and click continue. So again, it's gonna say congratulations and you have a few different options from here. You can try booking an appointment in the appointments dashboard. You can go to the appointments settings or you can set up another appointment type. Uh, so just so you can see the dashboard, I'm going to click that and then I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what we have here. So this is the Simply Schedule Appointments dashboard. Um, we have an appointments tab and this is going to show you all of your upcoming appointments and you can view past appointments or you can narrow down on a date range. You can search, filter, and you can also book an appointment from here. Then we have our appointment types. Again, these is, this is just gonna be a list of all of our booking calendars. So for right now, we only have this consultation phone call, um, but you can always add a new one from here. And if you need to, you can also clone the booking calendars as well. So next we have the settings tab. And as I mentioned earlier, you can change a few of the settings that we set up from the setup wizard here as well. And then we have styles. This is going to be the default style, but we can also use the Divi settings to um, set custom styles for um, each, each individual embed. Next, we have translations. You could install a translation pack if you need to. Some of our more popular ones are German, French, and Spanish. And then advanced scheduling options. Uh, we probably won't cover this in this video, but just know that you have a few more options here to help you customize your availability and your schedule. And lastly, we do have notifications. And we'll come back and revisit this at the end of the video just so you can see what those look like. But just know that by default, the plugin does come with four different notifications, uh, two for the admin and then two for the customer, one set for when appointment is booked and one for when it's canceled. And then lastly, we have a support tab here. This is an easy way for you to contact support in case you have any questions. And you can also see a list of the different diagnostics on your site. So now that we've reviewed the plugin and created our very first booking calendar, let's go back to Divi and finish setting this up. So I'm gonna head back using this little gray button in the left corner, back to WordPress dashboard. And then I'm gonna go back to my homepage. I'm going to enable the visual builder. And at the very bottom section where I wanted to add my booking calendar, I'm going to add in a brand new module, select appointment booking. So this is the custom SSA module. And then from here, we'll have a few different options. For example, under the booking type section, we're going to select consultation phone call. If you have a few different booking calendars, it's gonna show it in a list view. Um, but since we have that single one, I'm just gonna select the consultation phone call. And then if you head over to the design tab, you'll also get to choose the accent color along with the background color and the padding and then the font. So I'm gonna leave the font and padding as default, um, but the colors, I do want to use this pink that I've been using everywhere else on my site. So now if I hover over, now I'll have the pink being used. So when I'm done, let's go ahead and click the check mark and then we'll go ahead and save. 
All right, so let's exit the visual builder and then scroll down. So I actually went ahead and set up my buttons so they already work and redirect me to the bottom of the page. And so let's book a, an appointment. You're in consultation phone call. As you can see, we're in the monthly view and you can use the little arrows to scroll through the different months. So I'll book it for the last day in January, book it for 9 a.m. And just like that, we've booked an appointment. So this is the appointment confirmation screen. It says, thank you, your appointment is booked. And then it tells you what appointment type this was booked with. You'll also see information on the time slot duration. So this is on January 31st. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m. and then finishes at 9.45. The customer will see a list of all the information they input. And then they also have the option to save it to their calendar from here, Google Calendar and then other, if they have Apple Calendar, for example. Um, but just know that the plugin also comes with Google Calendar Sync in the paid edition. So you can automatically send them an invite. And then lastly, at the very bottom of the page, they have the option to edit information in case you know they misspell their name or something, or they can reschedule this if they don't like this time anymore. Uh, they could cancel the appointment and then they can schedule a new appointment. So if we click on this one, it'll take us back to where we started. So now that we've booked this appointment, let me give you a preview on how you would manage it. Heading back to our dashboard and back to our appointments page. So now under our appointments tab, you'll see that the appointment I just booked is listed. So if we select the appointment, we'll see all the information that we just entered. And then if we click view appointment details, um, at the same thing. So from here, we'll have a a bit more details, including the page that it was booked on, who it was booked by. If they were logged in, it'll list out who booked it. And then you'll have a link to reschedule or cancel from here. Um, but you also have the option to reschedule from here as well. Edit as a customer. Um, so again, edit information. If something needs to change, we could reschedule if they don't like that time slot. And then they could cancel the appointment, which I'll leave it as is. Next, I want to show you the notifications. So if we head back to our settings, go to notifications, I'm going to show you what it looks like for a customer as well as the admin. So here, if we click on the email for the customer, um, you can come in and edit the notification. You can change the name. You can change the email, whether it's an email or an SMS message. Um, the SMS feature is available in the pro edition. Uh, you can select who you want to send this to. Right now it's only sending to the customer, um, but you can also use a little drop down to add the admin, or you can also manually type in an email address. So your email, and then press enter. So you can also add in custom email addresses. Um, you can also CC, BCC. Uh, you can choose a trigger from here, and then you can choose which appointment type this particular notification is sent for. So you can tie different notifications to different appointment types. So I'm just gonna go back to selecting all, and then you can change the subject along with the message. And what I actually wanna show you is here down at the very bottom. So we have the live preview feature as well. You can manually select a customer. So both of the Natalie's are showing up right now, and you'll actually get a preview of what they'll see on their end. And we have the merge tags or the twig templates that actually pull information from the appointments. So it lists out all their details. And then at the very bottom, they get a link to edit this appointment. So if we open this on a separate tab. Uh, so with that said, I just want to show you that the Simply Schedule Appointments plugin actually comes with a few other features, for example, blackout dates. Uh, so you can block off at all the time slots in your calendars if you need to go on vacation, for example. We have Google Calendar Sync. You can, you can edit the calendar events, for example, the add to calendar button on the confirmation screen. You can edit how that event is saved to, to your customer's calendars. You can also sync this to MailChimp, connect to Zoom, WebEx. You can also set up webhooks, for example, if you want to send appointment information over to Zapier or Make. You also have payments, which we currently support Stripe and PayPal. Uh, we have tracking in case you need to set this up for conversion tracking and Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And lastly, we also have the team booking feature, which allows you to not only set a single schedule for an admin, for example, you can have a whole team manage your schedule and bookings from here as well. I hope this was helpful. Please let us know if you guys have any questions um, and you're always welcome to reach out to support and we would be happy to let you know if Simply Schedule appointments would be a good fit. Thank you very much and we'll see y'all later.